On the Republican side, we touched on those legal dramas. There is a myriad of legal questions for Donald Trump to try and navigate. We've said, and you and I have discussed this as well, every time there's a challenge or a legal question he's got to answer, the, le the legalities to one side, the politics, his polling goes up. His polling goes up among Republicans, um, not necessarily so much among independents. Uh, and this is the great sort of gamble that I think the left is making. You know, they want to push Donald Trump into so many legal challenges, you know, this sort of uh, Gulliver's Travel sort of thing where he's just tied down uh, by all these sorts of different uh, lawsuits and so on, uh, Georgia, Florida, Washington, New York, elsewhere, um, that he's unable to run on the one hand. And then number two, if one of these trials comes good for the Democrats in one way or another, that, you know, there's some sort of like actual real punishment involved, not just a fine, you know, that will, of course, change the entire race. But the thing is, I think that this strategy offends Americans' fundamental sense of fairness. They may not like Donald Trump, but they do not like this sort of idea that really seems like something more banana republic-ish, where an opposition leader, because that's what Donald Trump de facto is, the opposition leader, um, you know, is they, they attempt to jail him. They attempt to, to commit lawfare against him to stop him from running. I mean, that's the sort of thing we've seen in countries like Pakistan. But it's not, not what people want to see in, uh, in the United States, no. Kieran. Mike Pence has decided he's not, it's not his time. Nikki Haley, though, thinks it might be, James. Well, yeah, Mike, Mike Pence dropped out. Well, there's your breaking news here for the week here, Kieran. You know, um, I don't think anybody really expected he was ever going to, uh, you know, ascend the great uh, lofty Olympian <laughs> heights of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But here we are. Um, here we are. Um, Nikki Haley, though, is very much filling the gap that Ron DeSantis has left because DeSantis has just, you know, as we've discussed here, he's failed to launch. You know, he, he, he went and he had this really promising sort of campaign, but the problem is he kept running as, as if he was governor of Florida rather than a future presidential candidate for the entire country. And I think that some of his fights there seem so parochial, you know, his fights with Disney, uh, his fights over wokeness, they didn't seem like they were about sort of cost of living trade, security, mm. ending forever wars, which is a big Donald Trump thing. Um, Nikki Haley is filling that gap. Of course, Nikki Haley has some interesting points of difference, Kieran, with Donald Trump, not the least of which being that her foreign policy is much more, shall we say, you know, proactive, interventionist, wants to see the United States active on the world stage. That's an issue that I think really divides a lot of people uh, in the Republican Party. And just finally, We've got to uh, let you go, but uh, so you don't think Biden necessarily will be the candidate for the Democrats. What about the Republicans? Is it, do you Look, think, think Trump is is going to be there? I, I think he's going to be there, but you know I just don't think that it's a lock. I'd say you've probably got about sixty percent bi chance Biden is on the ticket, and that's shrinking. I'd say you still have an eighty-five, ninety percent chance that Trump is on the ticket. Yeah, fair enough. Well, we'll, we'll know. Uh, by this time next year, my friend, I appreciate we'll it. See. Talk to you soon.